Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we'll be looking at what would happen if Earth and Mars switched places. The differences between Earth and Mars are significant. For example, if you check the diameters of the two planets, Mars is smaller at 4,220 miles, and Earth is bigger at 7,926 miles. Let us then find out what would happen if Earth and Mars switched places. So, what would happen if Earth and Mars switched places? If Earth and Mars switched places, it means that some of us would have to drop out of Earth because Mars is smaller, as per the dimensions above. Thus, we would not all fit. If Earth and Mars switched places, then it means that we would have more days in Mars, up to 687, when compared to Earth's 365 days. Also, when it comes to gravity, there's more gravity, when compared to Mars. Mars has less gravity, at least up to 62.5% which is much less than what human beings are used to on Earth. Mars is also far away from the Sun, about 50% away when compared to how far the Earth is from the Sun, which means that if Mars were to switch places with Earth, which means we would freeze for lack of heat. Structural Differences Between Mars and Earth Satellite images have revealed huge significant differences between the structures of Mars and Earth. Mars, for example, is covered by dust and rock, while the Earth's surface is largely covered by liquid water. The above automatically makes it hard for people to exist on Mars, meaning that if Earth and Mars switch places, then it will only be a matter of time before all humans become extinct. Also, at the center of Mars are four dark circles, representing the Tharsis Shield volcano, while on Earth's image we have the map of Africa at the center. Understanding the atmosphere of Mars Through telescopic observation, Mars has very small amounts of water present, and if it were to precipitate out, then you should expect a layer of ice crystals. And while Mars might have small amounts of water, the atmosphere has been observed to be near saturation, which means that water ice clouds are a common occurrence. If Earth and Mars switch places, then humans should expect to be met with low-lying clouds. Fogs are also quite common, more so in areas with craters or valleys. Another uncommon occurrence that man stands to observe are the thin clouds that mostly appear in the morning. Humans would also witness the orographic clouds that beautifully form around topographic features, such as volcanoes and craters. Mars also experiences storm systems. For example, when winter sets in, there will be the spiral-shaped storm systems, present constantly, but at mid-latitude, that move westward. The storm systems are not very different from the ones experienced here on Earth. Another unique formation that humans are bound to experience if Earth switched places with Mars are the white clouds, which have been observed to be composed of water ice. Natural phenomenon are the order of the day in Mars, and one that piqued our interest were the dust storms that have been seen to occur at any time. They are, however, experienced frequently during summer and the southern spring. Mars also tends to get very hot, more so when it's navigating closest to the sun. And while the planet has been observed to experience storms, most of them are regional in extent and will remain active for a few weeks. Humans must, however, note that if Earth and Mars switch places that every second or third year, the dust storms will become global. And when they're at their peak, the dust will be carried so high that you'll only be able to view the highest volcanoes, at least up to 13 miles above. The dust devils are also a common occurrence on Mars. Mars temperatures. Temperatures in the lower atmosphere in Mars are negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 70 degrees Celsius, which is generally colder, at least when pitted against the daytime surface temperature of negative 10 Fahrenheit, negative 20 Celsius. And while the above temperature ranges prove that Mars is colder in the lower atmosphere, we are in awe that the same temperatures are experienced on Earth, but only in Antarctica and during winter. Understanding the Earth's atmosphere The Earth's atmosphere consists of a layer of gases that surround the Earth's planet, and the reason why they don't diffuse or dissipate is because of gravity, which conveniently retains them on Earth. The layer of gases is made up of about 78% nitrogen and up to 21% oxygen. Argon is also present at 0.97%, and so is carbon dioxide, but at 0.04%. And there's also some amount of water vapor. The above mixture of gases, which is not present in Mars, is referred to as air. The Earth's atmosphere has been made in such a way that it helps to protect the existing life on Earth. And it does this by conveniently absorbing the ultraviolet solar radiation. The atmosphere also reduces temperature extremes during the day and at night. One unique feature about the atmosphere is that it is continuous, but will slowly thin out and eventually fade away to outer space. Of all the planets in the solar system, Mars included, Earth is the only planet that can effectively sustain human life, which then means that if Earth switched places with Mars, then premature death is inevitable to all living things on Earth. Remember, the gases that we talked about earlier, the ones that had surrounded the Earth, 
Well, apart from containing the air that human beings and animals need for breathing, the gases also protect us from excess heat and radiation that comes from the sun. Layers of the Earth's atmosphere Unlike Mars, the Earth's atmosphere has five different layers, which are the troposphere, exosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and stratosphere. Let's examine each of these layers in detail and their properties. Troposphere happens to be the layer that is closest to the Earth's surface and is believed to contain up to half of the Earth's atmosphere. Dust and water vapor found on Earth are contained in this layer, and that is the main reason why the clouds are in this layer. Stratosphere comes second after the troposphere, which is the layer that contains the ozone necessary for heating the atmosphere. And at the same time, this layer absorbs the harmful radiation from the sun. The air contained in this layer happens to be extremely dry. It's also very thin, and that is why the weather balloons and jet crafts have an easy time flying in this space. Mesosphere. This is the third layer, which is characteristic of a top part called the mesopause. The top part has been established to be extremely cold, with temperatures as high as 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Of the five atmosphere layers, the mesosphere has proved difficult for scientists to study. It's even hard for jets and balloons to go high enough, and that's why the space shuttles and space shuttles orbit too high. Now the most significant characteristic of this layer, and one that cannot be found in Mars, is that scientists have established that meteors get burnt in this layer. Thermosphere This is the fourth layer, considered as part of the Earth's atmosphere. It is considered as outer space because air density in this layer is particularly low. Space is nonetheless beneficial to man because the space shuttles can confidently fly in this layer. And it's also where the International Space Station orbits the Earth. Before we forget, the thermosphere is also the area where auroras occur. Exosphere is the last and highest layer. It is characteristically thin and the place where the atmosphere merges into outer space. The exosphere contains widely dispersed particles of helium and hydrogen. Can Mars support human life? Mars cannot support human life because of the make of its surface. For one, it does have high levels of radiation and highly reduced air pressure. What's more is that the atmosphere only has up to 0.16% of oxygen. However, of the eight planets, Mars has come out as the most favorable for human life, to the point of NASA wanting to send humans there by 2030. The above then begs the question, how does NASA plan to sustain human life on Mars, yet it is not built to sustain life? Given that the atmosphere on Mars is unlivable, NASA is considering building habitats that are self-sustaining and sealed against the thin atmosphere. The design of the habitat should be capable of sustaining life for longer periods, and that's without any undue support from Earth. Let us not forget that traveling to Mars has been established to take up to 260 days. The above could be too long for anyone to be expecting constant support from Earth. The first base that is set to be constructed on Mars by NASA will include a science lab and a habitat. And since sending food among other support items to Mars will be expensive and take a lot of time, the construction of a greenhouse offers the best way out as it will protect plants from the uncooperative Martian environment. The soil in Mars cannot be compared to Earth's soil, as it lacks the necessary organics. The good thing, however, is that it contains minerals, but will still need cleansing of the toxic materials. If you're wondering about water on Mars, NASA is planning to derive water from the Mars ice-capped poles. The current efforts made by NASA towards sustaining life on Mars give hope that if Earth and Mars switch places, then life could be sustainable. Thanks for watching.